another housekeeping item I've been asked to announce, and I think it's a good idea. If you would turn off your wireless devices, put them in airplane mode, please. There may be some electrically sensitive uh, people here in the audience. Well, it's a great pleasure to be with you here today. I came yesterday from California, and it's warmer here than in California, so I uh, felt very much at home. Uh, my email uh, was there in case you want to contact me, and um, I'm going to try to go fairly quickly. I'll also make the PDFs of this talk available so that you can watch them at your own pace later on. That way, as I speak fairly quickly about a lot of things in the short time I have, you'll be get some idea about it. Well, we've known about electromagnetic problems really since the 60s. Alan Frey found that there was an effect called microwave hearing at non-thermal levels. You could actually hear sounds inside your head in the, in the temporal cortex. He also found out that uh, this radiation can affect the barrier that protects the brain, cut the blood-brain barrier. Uh, we've known in the military about this since the 60s and 70s, and I'll show you uh, how many studies are available about all of that. And the Bioinitiative Group, which is listed the website below, they've been compiling over 2,000 papers on this that are still contested in the general uh, uh, community, largely because there's a big influence from the telecommunication industry. Since 2011, we also have classified radio frequency radiation as a possible carcinogen. Now, this debate started with Alan Frey, who was really saying non-thermal uh, radiation has an effect compared to Herbert Schwann, who basically said it's only a thermal effect, the heating of the tissue we have to be worried about. And this is written about in Senek's book called The Microwave Debate. And they also talked about how the Russians at that time had uh, used microwave radiation to, to on the embassy personnel of the US embassy in Moscow. And if I have time, I'll mention that at the end some more. So the military uh, compiled all of this for the Naval Medical Research Institute, over 2,300 references of the effect of microwaves. The Army similarly and the Defense Intelligence Agency in 76. So we've known about these things. And technology has evolved from 1G, which was more analog, the old brick phones, to 2G, which allowed you to have flip phones and the old Nokia phones and so on that you could text with. Then it went to browsing and the internet under 3G, which was more broadband, and now it's advancing and rolling out to 4G, which is basically what's being rolled out right now, except with a lot more antennas. 5G isn't really here yet. It's still coming, although it's being really uh, pushed by the FCC, by the, the current administration, and of course the industry, because there's a lot of money to be made. But 5G is going to bring the internet of things around, which is basically technology to connect all the machines together. None of these have been studied yet for health effects. So the German company Rode and Schwartz uh, saw this evolution for a long time, and they said 5G, when it comes about, is not just another generation, it's actually a paradigm change. And I want to share with you what that means today. Of course, there's big money to be made in this. Ericsson, uh, one of the telecom companies from Sweden, forecast that in 2024, 45% uh, of the global population will be covered by 5G. And that has a lot of implications. Uh, there'll be millions of uh, uh, billions of mobile subscriptions, you know, and um, 5G is really being pushed right now, even though it's not even fully here yet. Uh, Qualcomm recently predicted at the consumer show in, in uh, uh, Las Vegas that there's going to be 200 million 5G smartphones sold this year. That's uh, four times as much as Ericsson predicted in the 2018 report. So they're really pushing this hard. Insurance companies don't really insure telecom companies for health risks. They know there's a problem. They won't admit to the problem. And they can't insur have insurance for if they do any damage. You can even see this in here in the SEC filing from Verizon uh, that the, ba the business faces uh, personal injury and consumer class action lawsuits relating to health effects. Uh, and so they're basically factoring that in that sooner or later this might come about. 
So just a few days ago, the Senate passed the DIGIT Act that stands for Development, Developing Innovation and Growing Internet of Things, or DIGIT. They say that by 2030, there will be 125 trillion IoT and other devices under 5G on the planet. That's in 10 years, ladies and gentlemen. So if we look at how the power levels have increased over time, you can see in the 50s in yellow, there wasn't that much radiation. In the 80s, it really picked up. Then we rolled out the internet antennas. By 2010, we are reaching the safety guidelines, and that's just for heating effects. Professor Piller, who wrote articles in this book that's a standard textbook in medicine, he said, you know, um, that it isn't just the tissue heating effects we should be concerned about. He said, the evidence for weak non-thermal electromagnetic fields effect has become overwhelming. Now, this still isn't accepted generally, and there's a lot of requirements for more research, and we certainly should do that, but we should start to uh, be aware of that. The industry, when it studies, two-thirds of the time says there are no harmful effects, and when you do independent research 70% of the time, it says there are harmful effects. So there's a real bias in the literature. Now, most of you are probably going to be mostly exposed by near-field devices. These are your cell phones, your cordless phones. Uh, we measure that in uh, the amount of radiation you absorb or the specific absorption rate. Uh, contrast that to far-field devices like antenna systems, like from cell towers, from Wi-Fi in your home, from the smart meters that are wirelessly transmitting, and from the satellites that are being launched right now as part of the new program. So in far field, we measure the power density, how many milliwatts per square meter are floating through the environment. In the near field, we measure the absorption by the tissues because uh, it has to be studied differently. And the exposures are only for short-term exposures, 6 and 30 minutes, respectively. So as a result of that, uh, we don't really have any guidelines for long-term safety, and we're all being exposed to long-term effects. Now, later on, you'll hear from Deborah Davis uh, at the end of the program. She's really a specialist in cell phone radiation, so I won't say too much about it, but you have to remember your cell phones have nowadays at least four different antenna systems in them. These antennas, when women carry them in their breasts, young women are showing up with breast cancer right where the antennas are if they keep them in their bra, which is not a good idea. So you really want to be aware of that. Uh, now, what are we doing to our children is a big question. This is the percentage use of children in this country. Three quarters of all kids have uh, cell phones and many of them smartphones. It's lower in Europe, as you can see on the lower curve. And when do they get them? They get, start getting them as early as age seven. And only by age 16, there's only 10% of the kids who don't have cell phones yet. And they, of course, don't know the dangers of them, and they use them all the time, sleep with them, uh, and so forth. And this is a real health hazard. Now, children have thinner brains, and their brains are growing, and they're still having a lot of neural connections being made. Uh, a five-year-old child absorbs two and a half more radiation than an adult, and our standards are made for a military male that's 200 pounds, has a thick skull. So our standards are way too high. Now look at the millennials. These are the ones born between 81 and 96. Six, 66 of them live in a totally wireless homes. 83% of them sleep with their cell phones next to them. Okay, and then you ask, what's the health of these kids? You know, Blue Cross and Blue Shield studied 55 million Americans that are insured of the 73 million American millennials. And here we are seeing at age 27, their health starts to rapidly decline with diabetes, major depression, hyperactivity, and so forth. And they're, of course, really worried about it because these diseases used to happen in your 50s. Uh, this new generation is called iGen. They spend four and a half teenagers, four and a half hours a day on their devices, checking social media every 15 minutes. And there's a 60-minute expose from 2018 in December that you can watch. They say that kids who use them for up to seven hours a day, their brains are shrinking. The cortex is getting smaller like Alzheimer's patients. And these are our future, ladies and gentlemen. So we're worried about that. 
Nicholas Carderis talks about he's a teen addiction specialist. You can see his website there, uh, drcarderis.com. He recently spoke in San Francisco um, as well. And he said, look, kids are really addicted to social media, video games, of course, increased dopamine and uh, as much as sex does. So these people are playing games. They're not having sex so much, as it turns out. There is matter showing, you know, this gray matter shrinkage. What are we seeing in the hospitals now? We're seeing increase in suicide rates. This is between 2007 and 2015. There's twice as much emergency room admissions of kids for suicide attempts or uh, suicide ideation. And just this year, more Americans are spending time on their devices than on TV. So we now have reached an inflection point. Now, I don't want to say too much about uh, cell phones because we'll hear more about that later, but most of the radiation is on the prefrontal cortex, on the frontal lobe, on the, on the temporal lobe on the side. That's where most of the radiation is absorbed. And when we look at brain tumors, like this study from the UK, you see a lot more absorption in the red line in the frontal and temporal lobes and less in the rest of the brain region. So when we talk about there hasn't been a big increase in, in brain cancer, you really have to look at which lobes have been affected. There actually has been a tremendous increase. Uh, the US government and national toxicology program studied rats and mice and definitely said there's clear evidence that mobile phones that these rats and mice were exposed to are cancers of the heart, can uh, schwannomas that are fairly rare, cancer of the brain, the adrenal glands. So this was the largest study ever done by the US government. Cancer also can be affecting from radiation the parotid glands, the glands uh, in your cheeks. Oops. So we seem to have lost this. Okay, we're back. Uh, cancers in the cheek, um, thyroid gland cancers, and breast cancers in women uh, that have the cell phone in their bras and so on. But if you look at other ones, uh, cancers of the brain are still fairly rare, but pituitary gland tumors are, have gone up from 1998 to 2012, and this is already old data, threefold, okay? And if we look at where these tumors occur, they occur, of course, in older people, but you can see each of these curves in different colors show the rise to the 2008-2012, and I haven't really updated this, but we are seeing more pituitary tumors. And these devices pulse all the time, as you can see with that graph here, and it's this pulsing that causes the problem. It's not just the carrier wave, but uh, so most people don't know if they use a cordless phone at the base station, even when you're not using it, it's always pulsing. It's like Wi-Fi in your house. So we're now looking for smart cities, smart houses, everything will be wireless. And as a result of that, there's 136 studies here that show you know, various effects. It's hard to read, but I'll just mention some of them. The brain, the eyes, the neurons, pregnancy, big effects on fertility, on sleep, on cognitive processing, on neurobehavioral effects, on immune system function, and on and on. There are so many studies out there, but people are not paying attention to them. Here's, here's an example um, where we see plants being affected. On the left is a control parsley plant, and then on the middle is a, a 2G phone affecting plant cell formation. On the right is Wi-Fi effect on plant growth. This is inside the actual plants that we live on. And we're starting to see antibiotic resistance now uh, to when we use Wi-Fi uh, in your house all the time. So I suggest at least you turn it off at night when you want to heal your body. Now, I'm here to talk mostly about more cell towers and, and 5G because uh, that's what's on the map. Here's a map of the cell towers, of course. It's where we need to be in communication, so they've put them everywhere. And there's about, you know, anywhere from... 117,000 of them. But if you live in close proximity to them within 300 meters or 900 feet or so, you know, people are more prone to headaches, lack of concentration, memory loss, irritability, depression, insomnia, uh, fatigue, loss of libido. 
you know, and if you go to a doctor and you say you have these things, there can be many causes for that. So, and the doctors really aren't trained. I happen to be trained being an engineer before I did my medical training. So you can see here by the bars, closest are the highest, ex, you know, symptom being reported. So in red here, you see what's highest is fatigue, headaches, difficulty, concentration, memory loss. I can't tell you how many people I'm seeing in the last while, even young people are saying they really have trouble remembering and having trouble sleeping and having trouble with having energy and motivation and so forth. And there's a video here that you can see on YouTube. There's two cell towers. They're only 40 feet apart. And the bees are dropping, just dying and falling to the ground right between these things. Very interesting video to watch. Then we've had smart meters. The smart meters have been installed in order to wirelessly transmit the data of your utility usage. That could happen just as easily with wired connections, with fiber optics, but they've elected not to do that. And here is what people report from symptoms from 2013, 210 questionnaires. Again, people can't sleep, have ringing in the ears, pressure in the head, difficulty concentrating, headaches, and on and on. 75% of these were women, 25% men. But it's not just in the US, in all the states, but they also studied it in Canada and Australia. And this study that was published in Alternative Therapies and Health and Medicine was a survey of 142 people in Australia after the smart meter was put in. They had insomnia, headaches, ringing in the ears, fatigue, cognitive disturbances, the same kind of pattern. So we are, we are basically heard from Mr. Wheeler, Tom Wheeler, who was a former industry lobbyist, groomed for the job, then put in as head of the FCC. And in 2016, he said, look, this is damn important. We have to get 5G, and we're going to give the telecom industry free reign how to make this happen. And he said, um, Sorry, I don't know why this keeps stopping up. Um, he said that we need 800,000 small antenna systems 5G and by 2025. Now, just to put that in perspective, compared to what we have now, that's six times more antennas about to be rolled out in the next five years, okay? And these are small distributed antenna systems that are fit on lampposts and so forth. Now, the FCC, as Harvard as Center for Ethics has shown, is a captured agency. It's beholden to the industry to a large degree in its regulatory rulings. And if we start looking at how this is going to look in the future, these colored dots on the bottom there are, would be all the cell towers from all the different carriers that are on the different utility poles uh, as often as every 300 feet. Okay, and this is what they kind of look like. Uh, you can see them on various utility posts, lamp posts, and so on. Here's one outside of a bedroom in San Francisco. Now, you're going to have this 24-7 radiating into your bedrooms. And they can hear some on the uh, top there. You can see several utility poles, certainly several per block. Uh, will be installed. And they have lithium batteries on the curbside. If a truck runs into them, they could explode. You know about lithium batteries being flammable if, if they short circuit and so forth. So in California, in Huntington Beach, they plan to put in these new fusion poles. You won't even recognize them. They're 5G. Okay, they're the base in the bottom and the antennas are near the top. So what's really here right now is what we call long-term evolution, or 4G, which is now called Advanced Pro, and it's a stepping stone. What's being installed right now is 4G antennas that will have some of the characteristics, but not all of 5G. And the key elements of 5G is that they'll have antennas that have multiple antenna systems that can shape a beam so it can directly go to your cell phone, your IoT device, in order to be acting somewhat like a laser beam. As it uses what's called phased arrays that can steer the beam. This is the very thing we did in radar technology, steering a beam directly to a target. And you will be carrying your phone. You'll be always in contact with your phone. The phone will give you better reception, but it, the health effects of that are perhaps very significantly increased because you're going to be using a very bundled beam 
going in your direction, and it'll start using higher frequencies. Now, this higher frequency spectrum is called um, the, uh, the high band, and it'll be right now where most of our cell phones communicate. Well, some of 5G goes down to 600 megahertz, which they're using that part of the spectrum that the TV channels gave up. But now we're going to go up to uh, type of millimeter waves, very small fraction of an inch, that will directly interact with your subtle body, with your acupuncture meridians, potentially, uh, with your sweat glands and so forth. And they're, they've released these in 2016, and they're assigning all these frequencies and auctions to the different carriers up to 71 gigahertz. And um, this is unstudied, and it ought to be studied before it's released. Now, the difference between, say, 4G at a lower frequency that we currently use is uh, that 5G has a much smaller wavelength as you can see on the bottom picture and so it gets uh, reflected from buildings it gets reflected from foliage from trees and so forth so therefore we need a lot more antennas to keep the coverage intact and as I said it may interact with your body in unexpected ways these active phased array antennas as you can see on the picture on the right the signal won't just go out omnidirectionally in all directions equally and decreasing with the square of the distance as it normally does, they'll be actually bundled and keep the cell phone signal very strong towards your device. And as you walk around, you'll be tracking. But as you can see, what these things look like, these are these new five antenna G systems in Oregon. Uh, one company is called Radwin. They called it jet beam forming technology. They haven't studied any of the health effects of this, but this is what it looks like. A beam is sent in blue to the target. That beam has a central uh, uh, lobe, as you can see the longest on the bottom right there, the longest lobe, but it has side lobes as this kind of technology does and those will radiate in specific directions to the people who are standing there. Uh, anyway, you can watch this. The idea for that is a great engineering idea for, from a health perspective. I'm very much concerned that this may lead to long-term uh, imbalances that we've already seen. And then Elon Musk and, uh, with the uh, Starlink system is launching satellites. We've launched 180 satellites, the last one just last week, last 60. They hope to launch a total of up to 42,000 satellites for 5G. They'll use the same technology beaming down on Earth, and Amazon is getting into the game and OneWeb. So we're going to be surrounded by satellites beaming 5G signals down wherever you go in this country. And there'll be ones in embedded roadways, 5G. This is a British company called Valorant, so that you know your smart cars can stay. So whenever you drive along, you'll be irradiated from all directions. Now, there was a paper in Health Physics in 2018 that actually, and, and these are the biophysicists that look at this, and they said, look, this 5G will be transmitted like all radiation and bursts, but it's so bundled and strong that it may lead to a much higher peak to average ratio of almost a thousand times more. And these peaks, you know, these sudden uh, transitions is what's biologically, it's not just the carrier wave and the averaging. And this is a real problem, and they suggest we might want to revisit our guidelines. And this is from health physics. So you have to start thinking of this stuff like laser beams going out in the future. These will interact with tissue in a whole different way. Um, and they haven't really studied the health effects at all. And these RF exposure guidelines you know, that we have are probably not really effective at all for that. So they're outdated. They have haven't been revised since 1996. We have, at that time, we had a much lower radiation level. We ought to be looking at this because other countries like Russia and China uh, and Switzerland and Belgium, they have a uh, hundred times lower exposure limits than we have, and they have uh, not allowed this to be rolled out.
So here's on the left what our thermal guidelines are uh, if you plotted it linearly, and you can see a very high uh, graph, and then down below are much lower levels that are recommended for safety, and you see they're a million times lower. But even if we lowered it a, th a hundred, a thousand times lower, we would really protect our population. So when, when the government, through um, Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut, asked you know, the industry, what studies have you done before you rolled all this out? They said, absolutely none. So he said, we're essentially flying blind here in health and safety, aren't we? And that's exactly the condition today. And scientists, there's um, scientists have warned, you know, and said, look, slow this down. St let's study this first. The studies can't keep up as fast as the technology is being rolled out. So the, the scientists are always behind the curve trying to do the latest thing. And 5G hasn't even fully been implemented or even or the guidelines haven't even been set for it. But 261 scientists from 41 countries said, look, we have to change this and use the precautionary principle. It's un ethical uh, to uh, ignore the available evidence is what the doctors for the environment already said. So Belgium slowed it down because they said it's too high. Now what part of your body gets hit, especially the brain, the eyes, the thyroid, uh, the heart can be affected, the reproductive system, uh, oxidative stress in the body is a very common effect of this. There can be DNA damage in single and double uh, strand uh, breaks. There can be interruptions to the normal program cell death called apoptosis and ultimately there are many studies showing with cancer. But what really concerns me is the amount of neurodegeneration, how the minds are being affected. This is a study for over a 20 year period to 2010, that's already 10 years old. Now and women over 75 have six, almost six times as much neurodegeneration that they're dying from and men it's almost three times as much. So we have unprecedented levels of neurological disease in older people now. And especially what's affecting it is the mitochondria. These are the energy producing parts of your body. And these illnesses include Alzheimer's and Parkinsonism and uh, panic disorder and major depressive episodes and so on. And if we just look at where neurological death is occurring on the planet, you can see all the industrialized countries in red here, or where all the cell phones are being used, you know, are the primary being affected. And in fire stations, you know, uh, when California tried to pass a bill uh, in 2017 called SB um, 649 that Governor Brown vetoed after we sent out a lot of reports that this could be damaging to, to slow down the rollout of this 5G, fire stations were already exempted from this because fire uh, people, uh, or firemen and um, people living in firehouses that had antennas on top of them, they all had problems answering 911 calls. And when Gunnar Heuser, a doctor at uh, the UCLA Brain Research Institute studied these people, you could see they had problems in their brain uh, with MR, functional MRIs, and he called that toxic encephalopathy. Now these people lived right under a cell tower. So some of the biological effects uh, include uh, things like oxidative stress, mitochondrial damage, membrane leakage, uh, the cells are stressed with heat shock proteins, there's DNA damage and calcium channels. And that's because we have biological uh, windows that uh, Russ 80 already discovered in, in the 80s. And, and these uh, don't require high intensity radiation in order to trigger them. Low levels at the right frequency and the right patterning would be the effect. So um, there is oxidative stress, which is like essentially free radicals, which cause uh, a form of, you could think of it as rusting, because rust is an oxidative stress of iron, as it were. And, and the studies are really quite conclusive how big an issue it is. And I'm sure we'll hear more from Dr. Huro about that as well. Mitochondria are the power plants of the cell, and they're especially important in the brain and the heart, and this is what gets affected. So here you can see oxidative stress, fatigue, headaches, sleep disturbances, low amounts of melatonin produced in the brain, some studies, neurobehavioral effects, memory issues, reproductive effects. I want to just give you an overview of what's involved here, okay? And we also have crystals in the brain that are called magnetite. There's five million crystals in every gram of brain tissue, 10 
100 million crystals in the covering of the brain, the meninges. And so these directly resonate to EMF. That may be another mechanism. Uh, Martin Paul has suggested it happens through voltage-gated calcium channels. We have these in all the cells of our body, but especially the brain. And calcium is a, a trigger for the uh, cells, especially the neurons, to fire and so forth. So when we interrupt these, then we have a major interruption of brain processing. Now, a lot of people are becoming electrically hypersensitive. It's estimated between 3 and 8% of the general population, but uh, maybe a third of the population is already moderately sensitive without knowing. They have these symptoms, but they're not aware that this might be caused by electromagnetic radiation. And they complain of the very same things I talked about before, fatigue, headaches, depression, memory loss, nausea, sleep disturbances, sort of vague symptoms. But I have many Many clients who had, le had to leave Silicon Valley because they're electrically sensitive and can't live there anymore. And I just want to say one or two words about water. Maybe you can answer more questions about it. But, you know, water absorbs electromagnetic radiation. It's in our atmosphere. Uh, of course, it's in our bodies. 99% of all the molecules in our body are water molecules. We're 70% water by, by volume. And so 5G is basically affecting that. But it's happening through quantum physical process, which so is what we call biological coherence of the water molecules inside the cells. Um, when we looked at how electromagnetic radiation is affecting water, you can see when you crystallize water, then it has this sort of hexagonal, snowflake-like 60-degree branching structure. But when you take water from a um, uh, water tower that has a cell phone mast on it, the crystallization pattern is totally disturbed. Now, these are more energetic ways of looking at water, not just chemical analysis. And we're now in the age that is called the age of surveillance capitalism. If you haven't heard of this, I suggest you look at Shoshona Zuboff's book from Harvard. This is what's driving this. Big data is uh, leading to more and more surveillance. And the military has not been short of saying, I think this is great for us. Maybe we can see, you can download this report from the Department of Defense. And they said, look, 5G technology has a great opportunity for us. It's benefits for our operational requirements because they say it'll play an essential role in hypersonic weapons, missiles, including those from nuclear warheads, which travel at five times the speed of sound. There, it's where you need very fast communication. So it's, in some ways, also military technology. And finally, I just want to show you there is now patents showing that you can actually create hearing with microwaves directly beaming audio or other information into your brain. And um, this uh, was part of what we call uh, the embassy at attack of the US embassy in Cuba that was reported in the New York Times in 2018. And uh, this person at UCSD is called Beatrice Golem. She said, look, all of the symptoms that these people had, and that's why we close, close the uh, US embassy in, um, in Havana, is because this is all microwave-related issues. So Rudolf Steiner, who some of you may know about, started Waldorf Education and, and other things, said, this life of men in the midst of electricity, no, notably radiant electricity, will pr presently affect them in such a way they will no longer be able to understand the news which they receive so rapidly. The effects is to damp down their intelligence. And this was said in 1923. So I think we have a real challenge ahead of us. And I hope you take some of these steps to don't upgrade to a 5G phone, you know, turn them off, get rid of your cordless phones, or at least unplug the base station. Only use your routers when you really need them, and try to replace, if you can, in your state, the smart meter with analog meters. Thank you so much for your attention. I appreciate it.